from the glamour of Beyond the Pale to the glamour of Donegal football politics. I'm delighted to say Jason Byrne, uh, GA correspondent with The Sun, is with us this morning. Jason, good morning to you. Morning, lads. How are you? Um, so we're, we're going back to a story that has been rumbling for months and months and months. Um, essentially, this kind of all came to light when Carl Lacey stepped away and loads of the academy coaches, the vast majority of the academy coaches in Donegal stepped away at around about the same time. A couple of weeks ago, the report that was commissioned by Croke Park and the GEA um, was sent back to the relevant parties. It hasn't been published, although I do understand that um, you've had access to it and you've, you've seen what it, what's in it. And then last weekend, a statement was issued asking everybody to calm down and stop talking about this, even though there hadn't been that many people talking about it, which had a little bit of a Barbara Streisand effect where you're like, oh, I wonder what was said. So hence, we're here this morning wondering, What's going on? What, what, what were the recommendations and what has been said that has been unhelpful so far? Yeah, it's an interesting one, Jerry. When that, when that statement came out last week, it, 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 was, uh, it was Kieran McLaughlin's name to it, the Ulster GA president who, who took part in the review. <clears throat> he just said that there was unhelpful comments in the media um, since the details of the report sort of emerged last week. But we're all still at a loss here um, in, in, in terms of what he was actually talking but I understand the local media in Donegal are quite um, put out by this uh, because the relations between themselves and the county border are at the floor, are on the floor at the minute, um, and that's that's kind of been simmering for the last year or so. But um, yeah, like the the, the report, uh, the external review report was conveyed to, to clubs orally um, at a county convention meeting last week, and since then it's been sent to all the club secretaries. I understand so. They're going to have time to kind of chew on this now until the July County Convention um, or County Committee meeting takes place next month. So it'll be interesting to see what comes from that. But as you said, there's 14 uh, high risk elements uh, that have come from the report. And, uh, you know, three of them come under governance. Um, those are County Convention rules, breaches of confidentiality, conflicts of interest. Then under the heading of finance, you have bank mandate and online banking, supporting documentation for payments lack of regular financial reporting and a functioning finance committee in place. Under audit, you have accounts not audited to financial standards and a dependence on the auditor. Under safeguarding, you have academy coaches safeguarding qualifications and academy coaches guard of vetting. And then under talent academy, you have uh, appoint interim academy lead group, post primary schools development and pressures and planning alignment for club schools and the academy. So, this all kind of started summering, uh, lads, last year. Uh, a year ago, in fact, yesterday, when, when Donegal were fairly heavily beaten by our man, Clonus, to end their championship, Declan Bonner uh, hung around for a few weeks as manager when the wide expectation was that he was going to go anyway. And then you have a huge lull there between Paddy Carr's appointment on October 24th. So that's all kind of summering in the background, and the whole appointment process was very, very secretive. Uh, you'd, you know... Another maybe Barbara Strays and effect when you had Malachi O'Rourke being heavily linked with the job and then him saying he's not interested. Jim McGuinness's name was being bandied about as it, as expected. And then Rory Kavanaugh was expected to take the job. And he got St. Junis to the county final and after the county final he said he'd pulled out of the race. So Paddy Carr's then uh, unveiled senior manager and that's all kind of maybe a bit from left field Rory Cavanaugh was the man expected to get the job he didn't get the job then uh, you know everything's going great as far as we know with the academy Carl Lacey does an interview with the, one of the local newspapers around December time and he says that there needs to be greater links between the coaching officer and the academy the county board seem to take umbrage with this this rumbles on for another few months and it subsequently leads to Carl resigning as head of the academy in February and as you said the coach the coaches en masse support Carl and they all leave and that leads to the collapse of the academy. And then it all rumbles on for weeks and there's no academy and there's no young players playing football in Donegal. And then, you know, all mediation attempts failed. Um, the county board are taking a kick in left, right and centre. And don't get me wrong, there's lots of great people on the board who have dedicated huge amounts of their lives to this. But just, uh, you know, what's transpired since has just been a very, very sad situation. And, you know, People are saying it's seeped into the senior dressing room and all that there, and I wouldn't doubt that for a second. But the bottom line is there's hundreds of young footballers in Donegal who have not kicked the Gaelic football at all this summer. And, you know, 
they can go away, they can they can go sign for Van Harp's Derry City if, if they're talented down the soccer route, they can go down different routes instead and you know, we, we this the damage that this could do could, could could be felt for years, you know. So um and then like coming up to the there was an EGM then and uh, you know, two clubs called for resignations of two board officers and uh, that was put on hold. Uh, and because we were told that this external review was coming from Crow Park. So it'll be interesting to see if that comes back to the floor at County Committee next month, and it'll be interesting to see what happens. But the bottom line is, all the clubs, a lot of them anyway, just want Carl Lacey reinstated as soon as possible. They want that rectified. And, um, you know, there's a huge need for change, change here. And I think one of the key findings from the report as well is that a chief uh, operating officer needs to be appointed for running all GA to kind of steer them through this and kind of start building again for the future um, because that's that's the most important thing here. It's a, it's a very, very sad mess and, you know, hopefully the, the damage doesn't go on as long as as it could but, you know, there's been a lot of damage done but it's time to start repairing and fixing things here and get the academy back up and running for the, for the good of Donegal GA. That's that's one of the the mad things, Jason. Is that like, look, there are good people in Donegal GA, there are great people in Donegal GA, um, but one one of the things that has been done well is is the academy and and the the academy that that Carl Lacey had set up. Uh, certainly, from the outside looking in, was was second to none. So it, it seems quite remarkable that he's the one that is not there anymore. Can you hear, Jason? I no. just lost Jason there. Yeah, you can hear us all right, can you? No, we're just having a bit of trouble with the line there. Um, so it, it, you, you're basing the fact that um, it was second to none on... Uh, the report actually has an appendix which includes mm. details of the structure of the academy and it is completely at odds with everything else that's in the report. So the report has this, uh, here is how everything has been run and um, we are very concerned about how everything has been run. And then there's this other aspect to it, which is the academy. And we're saying there's incredible levels of detail. Uh, there's clarity on roles. There's clarity on responsibilities. There's clarity on, uh, clarity on outputs and how we're going to measure things. Mm -hmm. And the communication has been excellent. So it, it is absolutely the clash of cultures where one is professionalism and progressive and the other, and I, I actually don't blame the people involved, uh, you know, um, there's an overwhelming burden on administrators who are amateur in the GEA, but sometimes people are, are incapable of seeing that their approach, because this is how it used to be done, is no longer fit for purpose in the modern day. and. I'd say there are many county boards who could really do with reading this report, and it's unfortunate that it hasn't been published publicly. It, like it's it's a it's a damning document, but it's also a really important document in that. Um, and sorry, we've we've obviously seen the document at this stage. Mm. If if you if you were to compare this to many other county boards, I suspect that you would you would find similar issues in in some of the county boards around the country. There are loads that are progressive, you know, and we know. Uh, the the progressive ones they tend to bubble up they they tend to ha to run great initiatives they they tend to be the ones who uh, you hear about and who are proud to talk about the things that they're doing but I, I think you need a professional whose job it is to um, manage the finances and the HR function and the back office function and the fixtures and all that kind of stuff Jason we're nearly out of time here but I was just making the point there that. Um, I think um, Shane was making the point too. There's a clash of cultures between the professional, progressive nature of the well communicated, well thought out, best in class plan for the academy, and just the the administrative arm of the county board, which is still amateur. And that's the problem in in many of these cases is that um, the the structures are no longer fit for purpose. Yeah, that's that's the point I was I was going to make there before I got cut off there as well. Like, and you know, you have to remember as well when Carroll was a player, he was part of a Donegal squad that greatly improved standards in the county in terms of what was expected within the inter county dressing room at senior level. And you know, he's he's Donegal's most decorated player, and you know he he brought those standards into coaching as has as have a lot of his teammates like you know Mark McCusen or his common now you had um, Colin McFadden and Paul Durkin involved in, in, in uh, Sligo as well and of course Rory Cavanaugh with St Junins who, who won a county title with them in 2021 and came very close to, to doing back to back with them so like as you said it's when amateur volunteers in the GA clash with this high performance culture that now exists among inter-county players and coaches is when you know 
the standards that the the coaches and the academies now require. Um, you know, too many people are on too many different pages here, so everyone kind of needs to meet in the middle. It's it's it's, a, and it's an interesting uh, kind of departure for the GA as a whole. Like, where is this going to go? Like, is is this occur- going to occur in other counties? Even though so many of the rest of them seem to have got their houses in order. You take Offaly as a prime example. Look at them now. Like, they're they're flourishing and, and and you know they're doing really well in both codes and they're on the rise big time. So, if you can get your house in order, it can make a massive massive difference. But it's just. You know, Donegal just seemed to have lacked in that regard. Like, I was talking to Manus Boyle, a legend of 1982, and he was saying that they learned nothing from 1982, and they went 19 years without an Ulster title, and now he feels that they've, they've learned nothing again from 2012, because so many of our stars from that team should be in involved. Like, Charlie running the academy was just ID. Yeah. And by all accounts, he was going to get the likes of Frank McGlynn and Paddy McGrath involved. And, you know, Michael Murphy retires as well, and that doesn't help the situation, and that leaves a big shadow in the senior dressing room. So just the whole thing, um, you know, it's, okay. it's just... It's just disappointing at the minute, but hopefully they can they can get it sorted and rebuild. But they need to get Carl back in to run that academy again. That's the bottom line. Jason, good stuff. Thanks a million for that. Uh, we did get a statement from yeah. Uh, so we, we, yeah, we obviously th- th- there's loads of issues in there that we didn't even get to. Like Don- Donegal post primary schools lagging behind even the likes of Tyrone and, and Derry and Ulster, which is a, an issue, and even the the lack of fundraising initiatives in Donegal GA since December 2020. Uh, but we did get on to Donegal GA yesterday just to see if they ha- if they had any comment or their side of the story. And um, on behalf of Fergus McGee who's the Donegal GA chairman uh, they wanted to point out that the Donegal Management Committee met for the first time last night since the review uh, and they said the action items arising from the review will be discussed at some point in the near future we w- will give an interview but for now we need time and space to begin the process as the report is only the guidelines to begin our work which we are hopeful will lead to a positive outcome for the GA in Donegal so that was their comments on the matter Alright, we'll uh, keep an eye on that